as well as the scramble to try and find survivors, there's a scramble for information to understand what's happening across the disaster area so that aid can go into the right place and that they know how to do it because a lot of roads might not be accessible. But that information is coming out, especially when we come to satellite imagery. We know there had been clouds and storms which have made it hard, but we're starting to understand what's happening better. This is from Turkey. I want to show you some before and after satellite pictures. Pay attention to this strip of green here. And the other thing, I'll just mark it for you. Pay attention to this building too. And what you'll see, if we just move it on, is that building has been completely demolished in the earthquake. But we've also had all these tents appear here as part of that rescue, that search and rescue effort, that reconstruction effort. We'll take you on a bit more. This is in the same town. Uh, this isn't a destruction, so don't worry about looking at that. But just look at these fields again, and you'll see what's happened is basically a tent army there. These are all aid personnel trying to get that aid to where it's needed. Now, getting it to where it's needed, you need information for that. And this is from the UN. This is a map where they've been mapping some of the damage. We can take you into one town. You'll understand the sort of things they're looking at. So here we are, one town. The red is really severely damaged. The orange is partially damaged. Yellow is just a bit damaged. But if you're an aid worker looking at that, you can see, well, look, this is in the center of town, built up areas. This is what we're going to need to do, the sort of supplies, the sort of equipment we're going to need. And that means you're going into that zone a lot better equipped than you would be if you didn't have that information. But the next bit is, becomes how do you get there, the logistics of it. This is another map I want to show you. Uh, this is from the World Food Program, and this is how they coordinate logistics for all sorts of aid, not just food. You can see the green roads are passable. You can get in there. We've got airports over here, so that one is open to all traffic with priority uh, for aid flights. This is only open to aid flights and ambulance. This airport down here is closed, so that might be tricky, especially since that road is closed too. And then you can combine that with some seismic, seismic information. This shows what was happening, and here we have the epicenter. So that information becomes really, really useful. Now, you'll notice there isn't as much information down here for Syria. That's simply not there as part of this map. But it doesn't mean we don't know exactly what's happening there, or we can't build up a picture, at least, of what's happening there, because the UN has warned that Syria uh, just might not ha doesn't have the capacity of Turkey to respond to such a humanitarian crisis, even if the numbers are lower. But we can find information from surprising places. This is actually from Snapchat, uh, the social media app you might have on your phone. Uh, this is a map of public posts. And we go through this, we can see actually there have been posts over the last few days, uh, public posts about Syria. This is one in the north of the country. Uh, let's just show you a bit bigger there. We can see... And this is the White Helmets. We've talked about them before. They are volunteer ex uh, exercise, uh, and they help people trapped in the rubble. This is a video from Hussein, who we've spoken to. Many of his relatives were killed in the earthquake. They're already refugees from the Syrian civil war. But this is another means of communication, of information. That information is so vital. The first three days after a disaster are the most important time for finding people. It becomes a lot more difficult after that. Information like all of this, maps like all of this, improves the chances of finding people alive.